morning. Good, good, oh, good, by good, God's good. grace, I'm doing fine. How was your weekend? It was good. It was safe. Mm. Safe? Yes, yes. Thanks to God. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, nowadays, <laughs> when you enter church, <laughs> oh. people, are, people are seeing people with loaded guns. Is, is there a basis for this? Because, because people have been caught with loaded guns in church, man. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Right here in this organ. <laughs> but do you, do you guys think that the, the assessments that we've been given on Canada and UK government's websites are extreme? Well, you know that they, they issue these alerts um, almost all the time. They issue them whenever there is something happening. Sometimes even during elections, they will issue these alerts cautioning their citizens against traveling to countries where especially elections tend to turn violent and all of that. So um, I'm not too sure is, is we should be too alarmed. I, I think that our security agencies, uh, they, they have their feet on the ground. Um, so they should tell us. I think, that, I think that they should let us know. Yeah, yes. The assurance will help out. The kind of people who can deal with this problem will also help out. But, I mean, we don't know the strategies they put in place. We don't know how they are reacting to this. But the threat is real. Okay. I'm not going to dismiss but, but, but it but at this not, particular point not, in time. Yeah. They, they, they won't tell you. Yeah. That's, that's, that's something we must bear in mind, that the security agencies won't tell you everything they are doing. Yeah, but we in know fact, our security architecture. To tell you everywhere you know the world, what? it doesn't happen. They won't you know tell what, you everything they are doing. You know what, guys? We'll be dealing with this issue of security on the show today very, very extensively. So you want to stay with us if you are uh, uh, listening. I now. had a question. What's the question? I, I wanted to know if Malik's good friend, um, uh, Double, is still in national security. <laughs> <laughs> how is my good how friend? Is <laughs> Why are you doing that impression? I, I have a question. I want okay, to know what's on the front page. The final is reporting this morning. Adopt new model contract that pays off oil companies per barrel recovered of the oil. And I is the one saying so. And there's one about minorities claim on debt lacking merit. This is according to the information minister. Stan Chat is committing to drive. Ghana's development. Those are the stories of the front page of the Finder. The Chronicle newspaper has mm-hmm. Ghana reduces child labor by 21%. That's according to a minister. Battle over 80 billion debt. NDC are hypocrites. They signed for part of the loans but have now turned around to blame Ekufuadu. That's the information minister Kuju Oponkuma saying according to the Chronicle newspaper. Kwasimin team MP tells BEC candidates to make constituency proud. Over 49,000 candidates write BEC in BA and why Ghana must leave ECOWAS is from pages <laughs> 8 and 9 of the Chronicle News. <laughs> Who wants us to which, leave ECOWAS? Which anti-integrationist <laughs> opinion is that? <laughs> anyway, the Herald is reporting this morning, Akufuado is responsible for 40% of Ghana's death, Dr. Mani Buama cries, and SNIT and TUC in Holy Alliance as scheme managers continue labor sensitization tour. There is one about um, age cheating um, deputy GCB boss caught again. Then, then judge releases minister's notorious boy from jail under mysterious circumstances. That's the Herald reporting. The Ghana Observer has that death story on its front page as well. You have a photograph of information minister and minority leader Kujo Pankuma and Haruna Edusi respectively. Government slams minority over false claims on public debt. Ashanti Region Chief Imam prays for Ekufuado to retain power in 2020. Ekufuado much, much less in the area of women empowerment. That's a group saying UK government raises alert over terrorist attack in Ghana. Those are the stories on the front page of the Ghanaian Observer. Now the Independent is reporting this morning. Very, very serious news. Over 6 billion deposits with savings and loans companies at risk. There's one about only 20% eligible taxpayers pay tax in the Republic of Ghana. And why sacrifice Atiwa Forest? 70 years of mining only decimated Obuasi, Akwetia and others. This is the cry of a certain coalition. The Daily Statesman newspaper, make a breeze safe again. The houses hanging on the hill. Mahama Ayarga's rotting deals the inside story on milking the state of thousands of dollars. Freight forwarders kick against 11% increase in tariffs. Those are the stories on the front page of the Daily Statesman newspaper. The Ghanaian Times is reporting this morning. Check status of foreigners as part of tenancy agreement. And this is not in Accra, but the voter regional minister charging landlords there. And fake soldiers have been arrested in Tumu. There is also one about today. Being the day that 517,332 students are expected to sit for the basic education certificate examination. The front page of the Daily Guide newspaper, arrest warrant for Ofosu and Pofu. 
Alpha CEO Bills Orphanage, Al Qaeda ISIS target Ghana, game changer for O24 Lottery. Those are the stories here. The new crusading guide is my very last paper, and the very terrible story I may start with is the boy. A boy who is just 13. He's died from snake bites after the Batal Hospital refused him admission. There's one about ECG is still in business. This according to the MD. We the People Matter Movement commends the president and drama over the Ghana Olympics Committee's visa for scandal as his presence accused or personally adding names for visa but he fights the accusers. That's on the front page of the New the Christian Guide. The newspaper. Five arrested over missing tomato piece at Tema Port. <laughs> Verify our drivers before patronizing vehicles as Uber urging passengers. Providing loans for students' government needs 189 million Ghana cities next year to be able to do this. Back page of the Daily Graphic newspaper, Kotoko Ash Gold to face off in Tier 2 semi-final and double dream on course for Kotoko reach semis of special competition tier 2. So where do we even begin? Yes, mm. this boy, this 13 year old boy who has died from a snake bite. This just happened last week. Wow. It happened when the gentleman was actually bitten by a snake in school. They rushed the gentleman to the Batal Roman Catholic Hospital but first the family reports that the hospital said there were no anti snake venom that's what they reported first then later on they told them that they had only one and that they needed four and each cost 350 silly so they had to show evidence of the money before they will provide the rest of the three if they had to ask for it to be given to them wow. so it didn't okay so they asked them to take the child away until they can get the money and come back they pleaded that they keep their child there. If it's the man, they can raise it and bring it back. Or they give the child the first venom until they can raise the rest and bring it back. Now, what the hospital explains officially as their side of the story is that the main problem is that they did, the family could not, and that's the most ridiculous part, could not identify the snake, the type of snake that actually bit the child. Because they couldn't identify the type of snake, it was difficult to determine which kind of uh, anti-snake venom to give the child. And because they couldn't do so, that's why they asked them to go away. That's the hospital's own explanation. That you cannot identify the type of snake that bit your child, even though you were home and the child was in school. Because of that, you, the individual, take the child home and go and seek out an alternative for the child. So and they this also... this is a hospital. This is a hospital. Now, so... And this is their explanation. Their explanation. No, but you see, doctors the first thing I told you... When you are treating a snake mm -hmm. bite, you need to know the kind of snake before you can apply the rice venom. But whether or not that means that if you can't identify the snake, you should take the, the boy home. I think that's where the question really is. Yeah, that's where the problem is. Because you can yeah. never reject an emergency of this sort. At least you can refer to a higher institution if you can handle it at your level. But eventually, the boy was taken home they tried alternative sources. They couldn't find any way of saving the boy's life. The next morning at 1.30 a.m., this boy died. Hmm. And two days later, he's now been buried. The people in the school are worried about why this should be the case. They are insisting that this is not the first time there's been a snake bite incident leading to the death of a child in that particular school close to the hospital. They cannot see how this is possible that the lives of the boy is called Joe Agbiti that the lives of Joe Agbiti cannot play on their school compound, be bitten by snakes, and get their lives back and continue with their lives. You remember that in the beginning of this year, some complained about the shortage of what they call it, snake venom. Yes. The same thing with last year. I'm Virtually every single year, there was some time, is it Upper East or Upper West? We virtually had to make it a national emergency to supply that part of the country with snake venom because it became becoming extremely consistent that people were dying from this particular snake bites. And you ask yourself as a state, if it just takes a thousand Sunday to save the life of this small child, we let him go. Yet we have money to do other other things that are not only ungodly, but are completely needless in the things that we do. And it's Damn. extremely painful for a family to lose a child. And that's what the father is saying. In fact, he's petitioned the Christian Health Association, the group in that takes out some of these um, health institutions, and also the Ministry of Health. But has it, the hospital responded? Yes, yeah, the hospital's main response, according to the Christian Guide, is the part to do with the fact that they had one. They needed four. So they asked that they be given some opportunity to get some of the... I thought this is the main reason behind so this drone project. So did the hospital admit sending them away? Yes, they say that. And they indeed asked so them to go back. But the story is even not that they don't have it. Yeah. The hospital explanation is, is that 
they they do have it. Well, yeah. they they have uh, one component. They have they needed yes. for. They have just yeah. one. But if the parents were able to produce, produce the money, they would be able to find to, yeah, some. Yeah, find some for them. It's and because of a thousand, four hundred, thousand, six hundred, this boy, thirteen year old, if the is facts dead. in this story check out, this is a very, it's a very very sad 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 situation. Let's see what comes up out of that petition to the Christian Health Association of Ghana. Yes, uh, yes, But yes. Malik Ghana has reduced um, child labor. Yes, that's according to the Deputy Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Mr. Bright Wekubrubi. Who is saying that the government's commitment to ensure that child labor is eradicated from Ghana is still on course? And according to the story, he says that child labor has the incidence of child labor has reduced to 21.8 percent, with Central, Volta, and Northern regions being the regions where the where the incidence of child labor is mostly mostly occurs because these are largely agrarian areas and a lot of people work on the farms so it is in these regions that child labor is it's 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 on a high now i go back and read a story which is attributed to him in two in 2017 and i'm wondering whether this represents a reduction in that 2017 he was talking about 1.9 million out of out of 8 million children between 5 and 17 being engaged in child labor. And that represents 21.8% of the total child population engaged in, in, in child labor. And this, these are figures that came out of the Ghana, Ghana Child Labor Survey. Um, survey. This is where this, these figures come out of. And the figures actually indicate an increase over a 2003 uh, survey which indicated a much higher number. 1.27 million children uh, were engaged in, 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 in child labor. Now, so there's an increase then. 2003, 1.27. 2014, when the, the figures that he's quoting came out, 1.9, there was an increase. He's still quoting the 1.9. Between 2014, when these figures were given till today, there's no data indicating a reduction in the number of children engaged in child labor. And yet this report, this story is reporting that he says there is, an, there is a reduction. Of course, he says that they have asked government to roll out some of its measures that are designed to reduce child labor, and these include capitation grant, uh, basic, free basic education, school feeding program, free textbooks, all of these, he believes, will encourage people to go to school. And once people go to school, the incidence of child labor will reduce. As things stand, I am, I, I am in doubt whether there is any significant reduction in child labor, given the figures that the, the Ghana Child Labor Survey has, has, has put out. And repeatedly, Raymond, we find that these children are taken out of low-income households, households where they find it difficult to make ends meet yeah and so the children become a commodity yeah and so they have to monetize these kids by giving them for instance to go and work on the lake water mm -hmm. which reports have recently indicated that may have some twenty thousand children yes working the twenty thousand children yeah, that's according to cnn's report so it's, the it's it's an economic problem as well yeah, very much so it's been the case for a very long time because these are poor farmers these are poor fisher, fisher folk, folk who folk. believe that they, they can't keep and sometimes they even feel Feel that giving up my child, even though I'm selling the child, is a better alternative than the child starving in my home. A, an and alternative for even the child. Yes, because they think that the child may be better off on the other side. I have also read a very interesting report where some give out their children in this case, report it that the children are missing later on with the hope that they will find them and some of these rescue institutions may take care of the children going into the future. Oh. I just hope that we get to a point where every child born in this country can be guaranteed the basis of life food shelter education health care some of these pictures yes. education raymond the yes. bc is starting today it's yes. all the best to all these candidates though, very really. much so Do you remember your first morning when you were 500 and i was not well <laughs> you were not well uh, 517,332 people are going to see the exam today wow. this is like 7,000 more than last year's own okay. you know last year's own was like eight percent more than the previous year's own now the interesting part in all of this is that the difference between the men the, the boys and the girls in this case is just 10,000. So there mm. are just 10,000 more boys than girls in this particular examination. But there Very are more close. boys than girls. Yes, there are more boys than girls in this particular examination. Now, we expect that they will take the exams in some um, 7,508 different institutions. Of course, I mean, including in all 16,000 
871 are the venues for the examination. These are both private and public schools you are talking about, which are going to which are going to be the centers for them. We are deploying 21,726 supervisors to make sure, and YX says that is an increase, to ensure that we don't have places with limited numbers, okay. some colluding with the students and virtually downplaying the essence of the examination by cheating in this examination. Mm. They mm. say they are putting extra security measures to make sure that students don't get to cheat because this is their first first main assessment. You do recall that the education ministry has said it is dangerous to have the BC being their first main assessment because by the time they go to write the BC, as we have told you before, we will only get to know that a huge chunk of people could not even read, they could not write properly, they could not really get to like the, the early grade assessment of the Brilliant. Uh, Ghana education has service revealed has over shown. the period. Ninety eight percent of them can't recognize the four letter words. So if this, this child is going to write the BEC, that's how terrible some of them are going to perform along the line. Hopefully this time our things are going to change, mm-hmm. and hopefully they are going to get better in the <laughs> examination. Because last mm-hmm. year's own was not really a major improvement. And what we forget is that this is one place that we drop almost a huge chunk of our students in this case. Last year, we did better. Last year, we only had about 13,000 or so people not going to the senior high schools. I mean, compared to previous years where we have to drop. In fact, there was some time we used, we used to drop almost 40% of the people that wrote the BC. That's true. And they have nowhere to go. They just drop out of the education system. They're not going to technical schools. They're just dropping out completely. And these guys will be on the job market when graduates are not finding jobs to do. So that's how terrible the situation but was you know, previously. But, but, but you know what? Yes. So we can argue that because of the introduction of the free SHS system, Malik, we now have more students who will be moving from GHS to SHS. Mm-hmm. But how do we make sure that they can move from SHS to university? There is actually more who are moving from SHS to tertiary institutions. Exactly. It is the reason why the Student Loan, Loan Trust Fund is saying, projecting that it will require 189 million Ghana CDs for the 2020-2021 academic year. That's the next academic year. This is what it requires to give to 50,000 tertiary students in that academic year. 50,000. And note, this 50,000 represents just 10% exactly, of because the annual <laughs> enrollment into our tertiary institutions. Yeah, it's very small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That number is projected to be at 145,000 the next academic year. So 145,000 are expected to go into tertiary institutions for the 2020 and 2021 academic years. 10% of that. 10% of that will require loans and they are projecting 189 million. That's the amount of money they require. The chief executive of the Student Loan Trust Fund, Nana Kweku Ejeyabwa, says that the fund is suspecting an increase in applications because if you have a lot of people who are now going to have free SHS, people who hitherto would not have gone to senior high mm-hmm. school, mm-hmm. largely on account of the parents not being able to fund it or some other factors. If these people get to tertiary institutions, they certainly will require financial help to be able to fund their tertiary education. And that financial help is largely sought from the Student Loan Trust Fund. It is the reason why the institution is projecting that they will need this amount of money. Currently, they are supporting 27,000 beneficiaries. And 80 million is required to take care of these 27,000. If the number goes up to the 50,000 they are projecting, this is why they will need 189 million. As Raymond gave us the figures, if all of these people qualify, or a large <laughs> number of them get into senior high school, and because of free SHS, they don't move on to tertiary institutions, they will need to fall back on the state for uh, financial help. Of course, and we also need to make sure that what they are learning within the senior high schools would prepare them adequately to be able to make that terminal point. Because yeah, but the plan was to make basic education up to SHS. Yes, so that's that true. If someone leaves at SHS, they have enough employable skills at least to, to work at some level. Able to move on to yes. better venture. Except to say that there was some time in this country that some people, they do not only have free university <laughs> education, they were giving chicken and their shoes were polished for <laughs> them. <laughs> I think it's only for a proper that it should increase a little for the ones yeah. who not get this. We are never okay. going back to those days. <laughs> oh, oh, why not? Be- believe, believe, man. Oh, it can get better. <laughs> anyway, oh, okay. let's move from mm. education. Hey, this banking saga, six billion CDs with savings and loans at risk. Yes, and this is according to the head of the other financial institutions, uh, supervision, Joseph Amua Ewa. Specifically, what he is saying is that we skipped, we skipped the tier one 
mm-hmm. after the main banks because main banks they come to service and loans before it comes to the micro finance and micro credit institutions we skip that particular grouping because one we didn't have the six billion to deal with the problem mm. two we did not really understand the scope of the problem fully and properly so we were unsure about what was required because this six billion is how much money depositors have that's a risk Oh, in the various uh, savings and loans institutions, so at how do we risk. protect that? Those so deposits? very good. So that's what they are basically now trying to triangulate it, find virtually all of the diabetes in the field, and be able to protect it going forward, and find the money too, because the microfinance institutions were dealing with one billion already. The banking end, we have dealt with almost eleven billion. So it's more than eleven. Yes, uh, the president course. said twelve. Yeah, when you look at uh, what they call it, the very statements we issue, summary of macroeconomic data. As of March, we are still quoting 11 billion. Okay. So okay. the 11 billion we are talking about in this particular case is how much we lost at that end. Secondly, 1 billion is going. 6 billion ought to be provided some mm-hmm. way, somehow by the state. And we'll try to refund it throughout the processes. So that's how terrible the situation is. Hopefully, the Bank of Ghana will get the money, maybe in the next year's budget, and we have to use it to build up. And one way to create a disincentive, Malik, for people running their institutions and not running them well yes, is to yes, prosecute yes, yes, some yes, of yes, these yes. persons. So the, the, the Marine Police Unit of the Tema Police say they have arrested five persons. Remember last week I did this story about the f- 10 mm. containers of 20... F- that are missing. 20, Yes, 10 20 footer containers of tomato paste. They fell into the sea. No, 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 no. Guys, this is not fair. So because, now, I mean, you can lose a calculator. You can lose a pen. Containers. A container, 10 of them. Yes, so the Marine Police say they have arrested five persons in connection with these, with the disappearance of the 10 containers. And the suspects are Mrs. Alex Braco of Oslo Shipping, uh, Alfred Frimpon of Customs Preventive, uh, uh, Custom Preventive Officer, Daniel A. Japon, a National Security Operative. I'm a, a national security operator. <laughs> Ama Sewa Sapong and Rebecca Naki uh, Ayuma. These have been arrested and granted bail. And these persons were reported to have mm. procured the, 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 the they bought the, the containers of tomato paste. Mm-hmm. And they shipped some to Kumasi. And oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. So, actually, so the containers are in Kumasi? Yeah, yeah. They shipped some of it to the consignment. Some of it was uh, bought and then shipped to Kumasi. They bought them from clearing agents oh. at the port oh. and then shipped them to Kumasi. So we found yeah. the containers now? Yes, yes. So, so they have arrested these persons and they are charging them with this. But the, comman- the commander of the unit, that's Chief Superintendent Joseph Enchu Abobi, says that they've actually asked the, the, the Customs Division of the mm. Ghana Revenue Authority to supply them with all the details relating to this so that they can they can process these persons for court. Great, great. And kudos to law enforcement officials there for getting those missing containers. Now, the online news review is brought to you by Zenith Bank in your best interest and Goyle Good Energy. Make your day productive by relying on quality fuel from Goyle. Um, your three-time CIMG Petroleum Company of the Year. Gold Super XP and Diesel XP are additivated to enhance strong engine performance and prolong the lifespan of your vehicle. Above all, you are guaranteed extra quality with our fuel analyzer from our mobile laboratory van. Get your money's worth every day by buying fuel and lubricants from any of Goyle's over 360 service stations nationwide and experience good energy. Buy Goyle, go Ghana. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, yenara yedia. Now, when it comes to traveling with ease and comfort, Zenith Bank's wide array of MasterCard and Visa cards will help you do just that. You can conveniently use your Zenith Bank MasterCard and Visa cards at over 33 million Visa and MasterCard ATMs nationwide, or worldwide, pardon me, on the internet for online purchases and payments, in shop for payments of goods and services at all Zenith Bank ATMs and on local and international POS or retail outlets that accept Visa and MasterCard. Go light with Zenith Bank. It's faster and smarter, isn't it, Frank? In your best interest. Guys, do you remember this young lady? When we are in our various houses, we cannot do anything about it. So they should please stop the conflict. Because this year, the cut of grade is between to five. And as we are in the house, we cannot do anything. I'm crying because we are suffering. The government should do something about it. So this young lady is going to write to her BC today. We wish them all the best. Yes, yes, yes. And she did her mock examination with her school. It was really refreshing to hear that news. Listen to her headmaster now, Samuel um, Ejari. Appalling, especially those who run away, things generally. And they are just coming when they went out. According to some of them, they went and joined some schools outside. 
So, Mr. Jerry telling us about how they are preparing for the examinations, but uh, in spite of the difficulties that they are facing with uh, rounding up some of the students who left earlier. Uh, but that's the main story on MyJoyOnline.com. BC candidate who fled to upon a conflict returned to sit exams. Said Techpe writes an op-ed, IMF Ghana exit performance not realistic, part two. BBC.com has Sudan security forces tear gas protesters. And you want to go and read all of that on the BBC.com. This is Super Morning Show on Joy FM. We'll be right back. <laughs> 